you know, it's very difficult to pick a winner. But one person that's not actually appearing in our program today is uh, John Burke from Christchurch. He's uh, here on uh, number one there, on number one grid position. That's 52. And he's recognisable with his Levi's leathers on. Now, that goes back probably 10 years ago when he was racing here on a TZ750 Yamaha. So there's a bit of history in this race with somewhat older riders and uh, young, very, very young late model bikes. There's the 32nd board going up. The 250 should be reasonably manoeuvrable around a course like this, although they get thrown around a little by the bumps and undulations on their way in leg two of the 250 production bike races. Aaron Smythe on the RZ 250 got a flyer at the start there. Bob Toomey tucked in right behind him. As they come round, Aaron Smythe, Bob Toomey is behind. Stephen Davies is up the front. There's John Boot moving right through, right up the inside. A very dangerous manoeuvre, I would think, but he's got, got away with it, no problem at all. John Boot, who will be familiar to many of the watchers of motorcycle racing, from Rua Buna and Point South, was the first man to race a TZ700 production by, uh, racing bike, wasn't he? Well, that's dead right. He took his bike to America in a suitcase, I believe. Certainly was one of New Zealand's upcoming riders and gave it away for a while. Very, very talented natural rider. A little like uh, another fellow that comes from the same area, Stu Avant. Neither of them, in many people's view, reach their full potential as riders, but certainly have the ability. Distinct lack of noise as these 250 production bikes get around this circuit. Very, very quiet by comparison with the Formula One and Formula Two modified machines. All these motorcycles have got to adhere to a specific uh, noise restrictions as far as production bikes go. So there's going to be no noise and they're very, very, very quiet. John Boot, Bob Timmy, and Aaron Slide. Bob Toomey making his comeback this year after a bad crash. He was virtually out of motorcycle racing last year and was around the pits of the Wellington Motorcycle uh, crew with Robert Holden and co helping out and being a spanner man, but back into it in earnest this season. Very talented rider, Bob Toomey, in anything from 250, 350, 500 to Formula One bikes. Had a brief burst on a Formula One bike. Never really got a machine that was uh, perhaps the most competitive machine to try out Formula One motorcycle racing, but I'm sure he'll come again. His enthusiasm seems to have returned. All of them, though, chasing John Boot. That's quite a substantial lead there that John Boot's pulled out. He's done that all in, all in about a lap, and this is incredible because you've got to start with cold tyres and all sorts of things, and, and especially going out there, if he hasn't ridden, uh, you know, in, the, in exactly the last race, then the surface condition uh, does change from race to race, and I'm, I'd be a bit wary about going out there too hard. I'd, I'd sit back for a little while, but he's obviously got the bit between his teeth, and he's really going for it. That's the RZ250RR model. There's John Boot. Looking back now to Bob Toomey in second place. A big gap. Aaron Slight still staying on his shoulder. And the three of them starting to pull away from the rest of the pack, although John Boots' lead seems to be getting bigger each lap. Toomey and Slight having their own little race there. Toomey pulls out a gap on some parts of the circuit. And Aaron Slight picks it up again on the top side of the circuit. Watch as they come around this time, going along the lake front. And they get up past the start finish line again. And just see if Bob Toomey can get away and get any closer to uh, John Boot. But John Boot has certainly mastered this circuit very, very quickly indeed. As is often said, when it comes to production bike racing, each of them has equivalent horsepower and it comes down to rider ability. It comes down to a little bit of luck occasionally as well, but true to say, rider ability is to the forefront that's John Boot through and look at that gap that he has now back to Bob Toomey and Aaron Slight
if there was a bike that I'd like to ride around the circuit, I think a little production 250 would be ideal for the conditions because you know the speeds aren't as high as the bigger bikes and they, they handle reasonably well and they absorb all the, ba uh, the bumps and undulations quite nicely. These modern bikes have got terrific suspension. They're virtually a Grand Prix bike. John Boot is running a Yamaha RZ250RR. Let's have a look back at this lead again as John Boot goes around the lake front. Well, he's pulled out even in that last lap, he's pulled out a much bigger gap. Just looking back now to second and third place, Toomey and Aaron Slight are really falling off. Alan Ravage, number 45 there in fourth place, having threaded his way through a lot of the field. This is a good little dice that's developing between these two good riders. Slide in front of Toomey now. Really nothing between them. There's a tremendous amount of trust goes between these two guys when they're actually out there. You know, you're riding only inches away from each other at uh, fairly high speed. So, you know, you've really got to, you've got to put a lot of trust in. Alan Rambage coming up to join that second and third battle. Aaron Slight managing to stay in front of Bob Toomey. Toomey dropping back into the clutches of Alan Ramage just a little. Ramage has also been around in this class of motorcycle racing for some years. Not the noise and excitement and absolute throbbing power that you get with the Formula 1 and Formula 2 bikes, but good racing nevertheless, and bikes that are perhaps ideally suited to a tight and bumpy circuit like this one. Three laps remain of the eight. And slight. And Bob Toomey still having that battle. Now have a look at the gap, first to second. John Boot really doing it very, very comfortable. I wonder how a rider like John Boot, who really made his name on bigger, more powerful racing machines and on circuits, gets on on a, a little production 250. Obviously the talent still applies. Well, the thing is that it's been a while since he's been riding, and I guess the improvement over motorcycles in the last sort of 10 years has, has been tremendous. So I don't think you'd have too much uh, trouble adapting at all. Uh, they, all these little bikes go about the same speed. They're all, they all handle exceptionally well for what they are. In fact, the way bikes handled when he started riding, you must wonder uh, why everybody isn't going as fast as he is. Well, that's true. They most of them handled like roller skates and gravel pits. But these things have been developed over a period of time, and uh, you know, 250cc is a, is a very marketable product here in New Zealand with licensing regulations and so forth. But it's very important for a manufacturer to get wins out here on the circuit. And Bob Toomey's dropped back. Boots still walking away with this race. Doing it very, very simply and very smoothly. See if we can get a look back as he comes over the top of the hill, just how much he has pulled away. But he seems to be doing it very, very comfortably. Well, you only have to look at the lines that he's taking. Instead of rushing up the inside, going the shortest way he's taking a long swooping sort of an attempt to get around the corner and that is that is ideal especially if he's got nobody chasing him he can get through the corner a lot quicker whereas this uh, gaggle that we've got here is you know first in first serve and hello what have we got here we've got guys bouncing off each other this is this is good racing
that's where the race is second third fourth and fifth places while John Boot races on his own way out in the lead and there's Terry Pavel on the uh, Suzuki really going for it another of the expatriate New Zealanders back here and enjoying the racing Terry Pavel spent some time in England letter P Bob Toomey dropping back just a little as they get the white flag on the last lap now John Boot Boot getting it very, very wobbly over the top. Just see how substantial the margin is now. I thought for a moment he may have got off the pace just a little with the lead being as much as it was, but by the way that bike was wobbling coming over the top of the hill, it doesn't look so. Down past the lake front for the last time now for John Boot. Very picturesque uh, part of the circuit through here. Um, one imagines you don't have time to look at the views while you're riding, but kind of Monte Carlo ish. Good for the spectators. <laughs> Waiting now for John Boot to come up and over the top as he finishes the last part of the lakefront section of the circuit. There's nobody there to beat. And it's a fairly easy cruise up to the start finish line again. Flag marshal out with the flag and ready and wave. Boot wins it. Looking back now for second place. That's Terry Pavel. Alan Ramage in second place. Terry Pavel getting up for third. Good race between those two and Bob Toomey who dropped back just a little in the last couple of laps. Alan Ramage coming through for second place. Terry Pavel for third. But no question about the winner. With the waved arm. Signalling that he's very, very happy indeed to be back in the best form. And back in the kind of form that we came to expect from this man when he was really the leading star of New Zealand motorcycle racing. And a big name certainly in the South Island. He used to regularly thrill crowds at Ruapuna Park. The bigger racing bikes just demonstrating that the same thing can be done on a very small production bike as well the rider skill and the determination are there you can find your way around even a difficult circuit like this one an excellent race Within a race, there was no question about the first place, and uh, John Boot just really wandered away with it. But back in second, third, and fourth place between Bob Toomey, Alan Ramage, and Terry Pavil, there was an excellent race, and Aaron Slight as well. Great dicing going on, and often, as is the case, Graham Crosby, when you get two or three people racing back in the field like that, they slow each other down comparative to the man in front with clear road. Well, that's true. Everybody seems to hold everybody else up, and you go into a corner, you don't know who's coming up the inside, the outside. And people do go <laughs> up the inside, and then you end up coming out of the corner slower. So the actual lap times become a lot slower, which gives the guy up front a bit of a break. Oftentimes, it can look as though those people who are dicing are actually riding faster. That's not the case when you look at the lap times and when you look at how far somebody in the league can get away. Very shortly, we'll have the last race of the day, the last leg.